Okay guys, I'm just going to do one more video before I go to bed. On to shelf number three, exiting the Blu-rays and going on to the DVDs. I'm going to try to keep these really, really brief. Uh, a lot of my very favorite movies are on DVD because those were the first one I, ones I got and um, I don't really make a habit of upgrading. I'm kind of weird about that. Um, I'm kind of like, okay, I, if, if I own a movie, I don't really want to buy it again. So I rarely, rarely, rarely upgrade. Um, if it's the Criterion DVD, it's it's good enough, although there are some that I probably will. But I'm just going to dive in. I'm almost done with the Criterion. I'll be done with that in the next video. I have one more shelf left, but I'm going to dive in. I'm going to start with um, 1946, Jean Cocteau's Beauty and the Beast. Um this is a really cool movie. If any of you out there like classic monster movies and horror movies and stuff, uh, this is not a horror movie, but you will get something out of this. This is just a really cool gothic um, fairy tale with uh, really cool uh, makeup on the beast and just really dreamlike haunting visuals. Um, this is... No offense to the Disney movie, I really like the Disney movie, but this is the definitive Beauty and the Beast, the, the one that all others uh, are should be measured against. So if you have not seen the 1946 French version of Beauty and the Beast, um, it is a treat, and I highly recommend it. Um, classic movie. Uh, next one is Walkabout. Um this one is special because it's kind of one of the movies, along with um, another one, uh, The Company of Wolves, which I'll get to in another video, as one of the first films I saw at a young age that really got me into art films and kind of taught me that film can be a lot more than the narrative. I saw it in middle school, of all places. We had read a, um, I believe it was a short story, um, and my teacher thought to show us this, which is strange when you're 12, 13 years old. But, of course, everybody in school was bored by it because kids are stupid and impatient, uh, including myself, so I'm hogging myself. But I still, it lingered in the back of my head as something I knew would be very important to me later and that I should revisit. And then about six years ago, I saw it, and it is a masterpiece. Um, just very visual and... Uh, just rife with uh, metaphors and um, yeah it's just a beautiful movie uh, about the Australian outback and um, definitely recommend it but speaking of Australia uh, moving on this is another one of my favorite movies uh, The Picnic at, Picnic at Hanging Rock uh, Peter Weir uh, this is one of if not the most haunting films I've ever seen um I wouldn't call it, quite call it a horror film, uh, although it, it kind of is, um, but not in a traditional sense. It's um, it's just incredibly chilling um, and tragic, but not the type of film that gore hounds would enjoy. It's it's methodically paced and uh, no violence or anything like that, but it's. Um, it's just all atmosphere and mood, and it's um, very fatalistic, but beautifully filmed and really good. So I'm just breezing through these, uh, not getting too into detail because I have a lot to cover. But uh, The Red Shoes is my favorite film of all time. Um, I'm really, really into fairy tales, obviously, and this is based on Hans Christian Andersen. And the thing I really like about it is it's not a literal adaptation of The Red Shoes. It's about um, a group of people performing a ballet based on The Red Shoes and how life behind the scenes begins to imitate art, where this woman, Vicky, loves so much, uh, loves dancing so much that um, she's having to choose between dancing and potentially the love of her life, and she realizes that she can't stop dancing which, of course, is the plot of the fairy tale, uh, The Red Shoes. But what's most notable about this film, and uh, just the films of Michael Powell and uh, Emmerich Pressburger in general, is just um, how colorful and dreamlike it is. There is a 15-minute um, dance sequence that is just unreal. It is um, just mesmerizing and 
you'll never see anything else like it. Uh, unless you watch, um, they did another movie later called The Tales of Hoffman that tried to replicate that, but that movie's not as gripping as this one. Although I do recommend that one too. Tales of Hoffman is good if you can get a hold of it. But they also did uh, Black Narcissus, which earlier in uh, another video I said, some of the more disturbing movies I've ever seen are not horror movies, and this one is one of them. Um, it's about a group of nuns living in a uh, church on top of a mountain in India, and they're just in total isolation, and it's a bit of a melodrama. One of the nuns falls in love, and um, another nun goes insane, um, and it's about her slowly unwinding and becoming crazy. But I don't want to get too into it. Uh, Black Narcissus is a classic. And if you guys only know like Michael Powell from the horror movie Peeping Tom, which is really good, but um, if you only know him from that, definitely watch uh, The Red Shoes and Black Narcissus. Uh, the Red Shoes isn't really a horror film. Black Narcissus kind of leads into that a little bit more. But um, I, if you like that type of stuff, then and you haven't seen those for whatever reason, um, definitely see them. Uh, it's Sullivan's Travels, I'm just gonna point out, this is uh, uh, Preston Sturgis, who's just one of the great screwball comedy uh, filmmakers and of the 40s. In what earlier video I said that uh, rom-coms are kind of crummy <laughs> um, and that they're good ones if you go back in time. This is one of them. If you really, uh, screwball comedies were kind of like the rom-coms of their day, but they were really, really, really good. And this has uh, Joel McRae and Veronica Lake, and they're wonderful. And if you've never seen a um, Preston Sturgis movie, this is a good one. Uh, I'll, there's another one that I really want to talk about in another video. Uh, or maybe, actually no, later this video, I see it down the line. Anyway, but uh, Preston Sturgis is great. This is his masterpiece. This is probably the one you want to start with. Um, Solaris? Kiru. This is my favorite Akira Kurosawa film. I first saw this when my mom was dying of cancer, and it kind of helped me through it. Uh, it's about a man who is part of like the Japanese bureaucracy and he's diagnosed with stomach cancer and he decide, he's trying to find like new meaning in, in his life, you know, because he realizes that he's never really lived. He's just been part of the system for too long and um, it's all about his search before he dies. It's all about his search for meaning in his life and it's um, really really a beautiful beautiful movie and I mean I, I like Kira Kurosawa samurai films you know those are the ones he's most known for but Ikiru just really gets me and it's very personal for me because it helped me through a really difficult time and uh, I like it a lot uh, Spirit of the Beehive I'll touch on this a little bit if you like Pan's Labyrinth and the Devil's Backbones uh, Devil's Backbone the films of Guillermo del Toro, uh, this was a huge influence on him. It's about a little girl during uh, the Spanish Civil War and, who sees the film Frankenstein and begins to kind of think of the Frankenstein monster as her imaginary friend. So, um, yeah, it, it, it kind of reflects, it's a lot like Pan's Labyrinth, but a very, very sweet movie and a very haunting movie. And yeah, if you like the films of Guillermo del Toro and you haven't seen this, then you need to see this. Okay, moving along. I am completely terrible, I do apologize. Um, okay, Days of Heaven. You know me, I rant about this movie a lot. Uh, I've often said that if I could have any house from a movie, it would be the house from Days of Heaven. <laughs> it's just beautiful. I, I'm a sucker for movies that take place on giant plots of land. That must be why the Smallville scenes in um, Superman the movie are my favorite parts in the movie. But this is probably the most beautiful movie ever made as far as like natural light. Um, the whole m good chunk of this movie was shot during the magic hour. So it's just 
it's just incredibly beautiful and um, it's this uh, impressionistic uh, tale of um, it's almost like a biblical thing I, I can't get too deep into it it would take too long but um, it becomes this, this love triangle between Sam Shepard and uh, Brooke Adams and Richard Gere but um, the, the love triangle is a bit at a distance um, and kind of expressed through the visuals in the movie and um, but yeah it's just really beautiful look at but it is beautiful uh, it is uh, very biblical um, it's even in the title the days of heaven but not going to get too deep into it but um, if you really just want to see some just stunning cinematography um, this is Terrence Malick's best film for that in my opinion it's one of the most beautiful movies ever made and it's complemented by a score by Ennio Morricone it's one of his best scores that no one really talks about um, but yeah, I love Days of Heaven. It's great. Okay. <laughs> How Sue. I'm not going to talk about this movie, but I do have it, and I do love it very much, and I know you've all seen it, so I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, How Sue is just gorgeous to look at. It's weird, and can't think of many movies like it, and I'm really, really hoping that... Um, Nobuhiko Obayashi's movies that more of them will be put on Criterion because I, all I've seen are trailers for them and they look wonderful. Uh, they don't look anything like this, but they look really cool in like, their own right and just uh, very different. So I'm really hoping that they get released sometime. I'm on the floor, guys, so I'm just kind of <laughs> trying to maneuver. The Night of the Hunter is, in my opinion, the greatest American film of the 1950s. If you like classic horror films and film noir and just movies bathed in shadow um, and have like a fairy tale quality to them and you have not seen The Night of the Hunter, I don't know what you're doing with your life because this is uh, Robert Mitchum at his finest and at his scariest and... Um, one of the great horror films of the 1950s. Uh, so yeah, check that out. Okay, this is my hot take. I like Blowout more than Blow Up. Not going to talk about it, but yeah, John Travolta and Blowout. It's a great De Palma movie. Um, if you guys like The Dark Knight... Uh, the opening sequence of The Dark Knight owes so much to Stanley Kubrick's The Killing. Uh, I'm really weird with Stanley Kubrick. A lot of people prefer his later stuff, like A Clockwork Orange and um, uh, like The Shining. I like his earlier black and white movies a lot, like this and Paths of Glory, Paths of Glory and Lolita are my three favorite Stanley Kubrick movies. Um, Okay, that's not true. I really like 2001 A Space Odyssey. But okay, aside from those, uh, that, these are my favorites. But uh, The Killing is probably the best heist movie ever made. Uh, it's uh, Tarantino owes a lot to it, but that opening of The Dark Knight just really screams uh, Stanley Kubrick's The Killing. So if you want to see some films that really influenced Christopher Nolan and a whole lot of other people. This is probably the most ripped-off heist movie ever made, and it has an ending that will send your jaw to the ground, and it's great. Um, yeah, Stanley Kubrick's The Killing. Um, definitely watch that. Um, I haven't talked to it about Igmar Bergman yet. This is my favorite Bergman movie, Summer Interlude. Um, it's considered by fans lesser Bergman because it's not as heady. It's very straightforward. It is a tragic love story, but it's the movie that got me into Bergman because I had tried to watch Hour of the Wolf, uh, at one point and I like it now, but at the time I, uh, just wasn't prepared for it and I'd kind of written Bergman off and now he's one of my favorite filmmakers, but I'd kind of written him off, and this was the movie that sold me on him. I saw this, and I just found it so heartrending and pure and um, just really beautiful. It's this, uh, just a tragic love story. It's more straightforward than his, a lot of his other films. And if you're kind of on the fence about Igmar Bergman and you haven't seen any of his films, uh, this is a pretty good entry point because it, it's not too, too, too heavy. I would either recommend this or... 
Uh, Wild Strawberries is another one that I really like from the same era. But, um, yeah, good stuff. I really like this one. And I'm probably not going to be able to get it back in now. So I'm not going to. Um, Eating Raul. Paul Bartel. The great Paul Bar uh, Bartel. This is a, a very fun movie. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. It's kind of a cult film. But um, he wrote it with um, Richard Blackburn. Who only has one screen credit. Other than this. Um, a writing credit for... Um, Lamora, A Child's Tale of the Supernatural. So I always say Richard Blackburn is a great screenwriter who gifted us Eating Raul and Lamora, two films that couldn't be more different from one another, but are so such a treat. And I wish he had written more because it's so good. But this is a great dark comedy. And Paul Bartel is, and Mary Warnoff are great um, together. They have such great chemistry together. And this is a very funny movie if you, if you like dark comedies, uh, which I do. So uh, There's another Terrence Malick movie. I just really, really like this one. Um, Badlands. This is his first film. Again, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this one. But um, if you haven't seen Badlands and you really, really want to see a good um, On the Lamb kind of sick romance movie, kind of... Um, this is a good one. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's based on Charles Whitman. It's the serial killer he was based on. Charles Starkweather. Wow, I'm way off. That's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, Charles Starkweather, um, who also inspired the movie um, Natural Born Killers and um, The Sadist, which is a really cool gem from the 60s. But uh, Badlands is probably the best movie based on him um, and moving forward eraser head oh here's the other Preston Sturgis movie that I recommend uh, Palm Beach Story uh, this is a really weird one uh, Claudette Colbert and Joel McRae it's um, very very unconventional and it kind of turned me off when I first saw it but the more I watch it the more hilarious I think I think it is um, it's just so strange and now I kind of think it's one of the definitive screwball comedies so if you really like you know romantic comedies and you want to see a good one Palm Beach Story really great uh, along with It Happened One Night uh, it's a classic Okay, um, this is one of the more dreamlike films I've ever seen. Valerie and her Week of Wonders um, kind of influenced this movie, uh, the movie The Company of Wolves. It's a uh, kind of this um, abstract fairy tale movie. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. It, it really operates on a dream lot through dream logic, but uh, really, really beautiful to look at and haunting and uh it's a check check film but yeah really great and i'm going really long with this so i'm trying to wrap it up uh in a lonely place is my favorite bogart film uh maybe even my favorite film noir this is a i love grizzled old humphrey bogart and if you like grizzled old humphrey bogart this is uh this is really really well well written movie um really intense. The New World. I hate saying the word overrated, but this is uh, Terrence Malick's, I mean not overrated, <laughs> underrated. I hate saying underrated. This is uh, Terrence Malick's underrated uh, film about Pocahontas. It's probably the best Pocahontas movie, but that's not saying much. There haven't been really any good ones, but um, it's, uh, Jesus, it's just beautiful. I, Terrence Malick's movies are always beautiful, so even if you don't really like the narrative and it's not doing anything for you, um, they are very pretty to look at. <laughs> and I have Robocop. I still have not upgraded this to Blu-ray. Arrow just put it out. I'm kind of dragging my feet on it. But, um, Adaptation of Great Expectations by David Lean. This is a really cool um, movie, 1946, 
um, adaptation of Charles Dickens, of course, but one of the better Dickens uh, adaptations. Anyway, uh, I'm getting tired, and you can probably tell from the way I'm stumbling, although I always stumble, but I wrap this up. So you guys have a nice day, and be safe.